Thank you very much. Nice to see everybody this afternoon in Spokane. My mom was actually raised on South Hill, and she went to LC. Is that good? I know there's a mixed battle here in Spokane, but I grew up coming to this park. It's fun to see all the changes for sure. But what an event to be able to be able to gather here to honor our first responders. In a time when you're hearing from so many of the socialists in Washington State and across America that we need to defund our police, it's obviously the most ridiculous movement that we've seen in our lifetimes. So I live in the city of Bothell. I've lived there for 46 years besides living in Egypt and Pakistan for a period of time. But sadly, we just lost an officer in the line of duty just about four days ago. And that's, of course, heartbreaking to think that somebody lost their life while on duty protecting each one of us. We've not lost an officer in 25 years in the city of Bothell. And so there's a lot of mourning, of course, and we're praying for the family of the officer that was lost. But so many officers throughout America put their lives on the line each and every day for each one of us here and those American citizens across this beautiful uh, country that we live in. You know, I've been to a lot of different countries in the world as I lived overseas, and it's not like it is here, where we can know that our personal safety is secure when we know that somebody is in the line of duty. I just went to Kashmir a couple days ago, and they have a 9-11 memorial there. Yeah. It's incredible. If you haven't been, you got to go check it out. But as we stood there, you reflect back to what happened in 2001 and how these officers would race up to the top of these towers that were collapsing and then coming out. And they were our heroes then, and they're our heroes still today. Yeah. 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 You know, after the last seven here, years here in Washington State, I hate to say it, but crime has exponentially increased. As the standing behind the police officers, as people have continued to back away from that, and that you hear like Jay Inslee letting 950 prisoners out of jail when we're all under house arrest. It's insane. The world is upside down. You know, over the last seven years, crime has exponentially increased, where murder is up by 41%, where rape is up by 65%. We live in a place of lawlessness today. I went to um, Chaz, which Jay Inslee said he was unaware of. We all know that he represents three counties in western Washington, King, Pierce, and Snohomish County. And to think that he's unaware of what's happening there. You know that first night when they gave him an inch, they actually took six blocks. And of course in that area, the 500 residents that live there, their constitutional rights were taken away. I went down there, and the first thing that you encounter is a barrier, which is interesting, and then you encounter folks with firearms, and then if you go to express your free speech, if it doesn't agree with violent Antifa's free speech, they yank you out violently or they shoot you on the spot. That's what's happening in the bastion of socialism in the Emerald City in Seattle. And we need to rise up against that. Because you're here, I know that you believe in the Constitution. And today we're having dictates coming from a, inside of a mansion, being thrown over a high wall, controlling each and every one of our lives right now. And to me, that's a great concern because we don't have a king in Washington State. We have a Constitution. Both the U.S. Constitution as well as the state Constitution. And it's good for us to become very familiar with those. Make sure that you're reading with your kids, reading them yourselves, because if we don't remember, we're so quickly to let things happen and our constitutional rights are taken away. But if we stand up for our constitutional rights, make sure that our voices are heard and stand behind our police and first responders, then we're gonna stand in the gap for those people who may not know, but ultimately defend our future here in Washington State. Because I think there's a rise of socialism that's being pushed out of downtown Seattle. They want to push it into King County, and they want to push it into the rest of the state. But we have to stand up and say, no, no more, right? Yeah. And I recognize there's a lot of people here from a different party than mine, but I just want to tell you that I would like to unite Washington State. We need to come together, because I fear what our future will look like if we continue to have the division that we have today. And what happened in downtown Seattle was not an issue of race. It was an issue of crime. If it was an issue of race, these folks would have not broken into 67 different Asian businesses. They would have honored those businesses and protected those businesses. 
We have a lot of work constantly to do in understanding each other's backgrounds and understanding each other's different diversities. And I think America and Washington State is great because of our diversity. Whoops. I blanked out for a minute. My time might be up. <laughs> but let me just talk for a quick turn. I know we're here to honor police, but one of my biggest concerns and the reason why I jumped in this race and my wife of 23 years and my five kids, we saw what was happening with the drug culture in Washington. Just two years ago, my wife and I ran what's called Initiative 27. It was a ban on heroin injection sites. Because the city of Seattle wanted to open up these locations that you could walk in, you can get your tourniquet, you can get your syringe, you can get your needle, a pan to cook your heroin in, and even the matches. It's the most ridiculous thing to address the rise of the drug culture in Washington State. The man behind it is the leader of King County Health. You know, he's the one who's actually advising Jay Inslee during this crisis. So the one that's responsible for the most reckless way to address drug addiction in America's history is the one that's advising Inslee during this crisis. So pay attention to true data and science. But what I've seen as I engaged in Initiative 27 and we got 20 different jurisdictions to ban heroin injection sites, that people are suffering throughout Washington state. We have 21,000 homeless a night in this state. We have 12,000 in Seattle, 3,000 a night here, homeless in Ponderea, Soton County, Yakima, throughout our state. And what is happening today is we're enabling people to go toward a path towards suicide. You know, 80% of the homeless today are addicted to drugs and alcohol. 30% are dealing with unaddressed mental health issues. If we truly wanna have compassion, we surround our arms around these folks, we reach our hand down and say no more. We're gonna enforce the laws if you're using heroin, you need to go to jail. And if jail is not the option, you wanna choose another one and go to one year inpatient treatment, we're gonna set up pathways to recovery to get people back on their feet. I think true compassion is saying you have a better purpose in your life. Just living underneath the tarp surrounded by garbage and needles is not compassion. But we have to partner with our first responders. They're the ones on the front line. They're the ones at two in the morning, three in the morning that get the calls of what's happening as somebody's overdosed from heroin. They're going in, regardless of their own personal safety, to step in front of what we might see. And so they're dealing with the crises. They're dealing with the thoughts in their mind. And the thought to defund the police is, of course, the complete opposite direction to go. We need to provide more funding. I served on Bothell City Council for 12 years. I was elected three times. Every time I was endorsed by both police and uh, firefighters unions because I think I said, and I stood up with that, we fully funded the police. We always look for ways that we can give them more money for training. That's the right thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. You, hear, you hear reckless, irresponsible statements from folks that we need to defund the police and reallocate it to somewhere else. If they're saying there's not enough training there, isn't that the opposite direction? Isn't saying we need to adequately fund the police who are on the front lines and make sure that they have the counseling that they need because they're dealing with crisis each and every day. I don't know if you sat down and listened to the stories of the horrific things that they have to encounter on a regular basis, but it's such incredible trauma. And so provide them resources and help surround them, their families is what we absolutely need to do. This is the time that we need to vocalize more than ever, and certainly in my short 46 years of life, that we need to stand up with these first responders. So I'm thrilled that you're here today to do so. We have to pray for them, we gotta support them, we gotta send them encouraging letters, because you probably notice a few familiar faces here. They're the ones that are your neighbors, they're the ones standing on the sidelines on a sport event. They're the ones coaching your kids on the field. To think there's some detached, unknown face is just a delusion and trying to control the narrative. The truth is, they're our family, right? Well, we're continuing a pathway in this campaign. Your ballots are probably sitting on your kitchen counter. My name's Joshua Freed. I certainly would appreciate your vote. So if you want to fill in that ballot, I believe that I am the only candidate with the experience that's necessary to actually win the election in November, and it's time for change in Washington State. Absolutely. So vote for freedom, vote for free. And may God bless you, and God bless the police responders that we have here tonight. Thank you.